because for a second consecutive World Cup, Archie, and thanks for waiting for this as well, by the way, <laughs> Germany are out in the group stages. Surely there is going to have to be a rebuild for the national team. You'd think so. And also just to point out, as I've seen one or two saying on Twitter, Kay, not the first time that Germany have been the victims of a was the ball over the line decision at a World Cup. <laughs> so we, we move to why this happened. I think you saw after the first 10 minutes today, the complacency that was there against this Costa Rica team. They seem to think that, hang on, we don't need to give all our energy to roll this team over. And I think Costa Rica sensed that as well. If you look at the overarching reasons as to why they're going out, I think that the balance of this team isn't quite right, that Thomas Muller was continually picked when actually a big decision needed to be made by Hansi Flick to drop him for Nicholas Fulkrug, for Germany to play with a number nine, but also for Hansi Flick to be able to say to some of these big name players, actually, I'm not gonna try and jam you into the team no matter what. It's about how the system works for the team. And I think that ultimately that has cost Germany over the course of the three games that they've had as well. And you wonder, has there been enough of a departure from Joachim Love? Let's not forget that Hansi Flick was an assistant to him. And particularly having just listened to him in his TV interview, I didn't get the sense of the fact that he'd made many mistakes or that there'd been that much remorse for this. But the fact is, the same things keep on happening to Germany in major tournaments. Kay, if I went through with you what happened in 2018, what happened in 2021, and in this tournament, it's the same thing in a bad first game, a better second game where everything looks better, and then a terrible third game as well. It's just they got lucky against Hungary last time, that Leon Goretzka rescued them, and then England put them to the sword. I think that the DFB have to change things. It reminds me the way that they stick to 4 2 3 one, it, it, it gives me recollections of how in England when I was growing up it used to be it's 4-4-2 four, four, no matter what and they have to just jam things in there and as Germany that they do have problems as well bringing through certain types of players but don't forget Benedict Herverdes who is not a left back played the entirety of the 2014 World Cup at left back for Germany. There are questions about the lack of fight in this team although Hansi Flick was very defensive against that when Bastian Schweinsteiger put that to him on German TV. But I think that Schweinsteiger has a point. You've got the Bayern players who I think are far too comfortable in this team. And it's left up to Jamal Musiala, who we got to the end of this game. And it felt like he was just dribbling and didn't feel comfortable passing to his teammates because he didn't trust them. So, <laughs> yeah, a whole load of problems for Germany. Yeah, it's interesting because Schweinsteiger did say at the back we have one defender of quality in Rudiger and the rest, they're just decent Bundesliga level. He was very cutting in what he said. Hansi Flick said we need to get better at player development, saying that we've been crying out for number nines and strong fullbacks. Uh, defending always distinguished who we were for years. We need to get back to basics. <clears throat> yeah. Why didn't you play one? Can I, I just correct myself? One, then. Can, can, <laughs> I, can I just correct myself quickly? Because I was actually watching the Germany game more than the Spain game, and I didn't realise the referee had and the assistant had given the ball out. Right. It was changed. Apologise for that. I wasn't watching the Spain game as close because I thought it was a dead rubber. Let's. Go, I still think it was a good goal, by the way. So. I'm not the ref. <laughs> oh, still, I, 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 honestly, right. I suppose I thought that game was a dead rubber. I thought everything was in Costa Rica, Germany. But go back to the Germany point. I was astonished that uh, the big lad, what's his name again, that came on? Phil Krug. Phil, 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 Krug. Phil, Krug. Phil Krug. I was astonished he didn't start. He then put Kimmich to right back, and Costa Rica were all... And, and I, know they, I know they won the game, effectively, but we're talking about team selection. Costa Rica were always going to be under the cosh. They were always going to defend narrow, and there was not going to be much space. And Musiala, some of the dribbles he went on... And, that, that young lad's close control and how he ducks and drops his shoulder and creates space is amazing. Mm. But if you've got at least that big guy, what was it we described as horse rubbish yeah. in the middle, getting balls in the box, it creates space for others. And Hansi Flick can talk about team selection all he wants, but he said three games and all the friendlies and Nations League and all these games going into it to figure this out. 
and he hasn't been able to do it. You, you, you can't actually tell me, you look at that team and tell me that is such a bad team and, and the Germans have to rip it up and start producing players again. I mean, seriously. I mean, you can argue whether Muller should have played or not, but the well, fact is... Well, it would be nice to play the players in, the best, in their Muller's... positions, which shows that there are some glaring... Well, I'm going to get there. If you... Muller's playing for one of the best teams on the planet in Bayern Munich every week, and he's doing well, he's doing fine there. Yeah. So don't just start throwing not things recently, at Muller. Not... But look at, look at, you've got Gunda, Gunda one particular plays for, again, arguably the best team on the planet. I mean, you, Goretzka, you're telling me Goretzka's not a great player? Come on. So, I mean, I so basically we're looking at the back line. So if you're going to talk about developing players, yes, you need to develop some, some, some defenders, because that's where the problem is. <laughs> Defensively. The problem is, Stevie, the problem is, is if, if the weaknesses of the team are not being addressed and you're just basing it all around your strongest players, you need to have them mixing in as well and defending those guys as well. And there seems to be a bit of a rift there. And the fact is as well, Handy Flick, as, as Craig's saying, does he know his best team? He's picked three different right backs for the group stage games. That, that is not the actions of a guy who I think, OK, yeah, he definitely knows what teams he, he wants to be playing here. So I think that he needs to be playing into the hands of the guys who don't play for Bayern. And there's been a lot of talk about how he's such a good man manager but and how he has such close relations with, with the, the top players. I wonder whether it was too much because I think that sometimes you can't have dessert for breakfast. You've got to be, be able to play the players who are going to fit into that system the best and not just pick, say, Ilkay Gundogan at a number 10 position where you need to be having Jamal Musiala there to get the best out of him for three games. On, we have, I have to remind everybody that Germany won today and, uh, and uh, they lost against Japan. And I want to remind everybody that today Spain lost against Japan. So, yeah, you can be very critical to, uh, to Germany and I agree with Archie, we, I think he knows better the national team that we all do. But I have to go with Stevie. When I see Bayern Munich play, playing in Champions League, and you add to that Bayern Munich Rudiger at the back and Gundogan in the middle, they're going to win the Champions League. And so therefore, I think they have a very strong team. So what did doesn't work in the national team? I don't have the answer. I think Ansi Flick has to find how to make those players as efficient that they are for the for their clubs. Uh, but there's a big just... drop off. There's a big drop-off in terms of the quality of the rest of the Bayern team and what they're playing with uh, at national team level. I think that's part of it. They don't have the one-man sweeping machine in Alfonso Davies at left-back, for example, who can zoom in. And you could see sure. sometimes the reliance in the way that these players are expecting counter-attacks to be swept up as they were when Hansi Flick was at Bayern. But that's not the case. I think as well, on a Japanese level... It's quite amusing that the, the four goals that they've scored in this tournament to knock Germany out are all by players who are based in Germany right now. <laughs> Ritsu Doan scoring twice. Our Tanaka, who plays for Fortuna Dusseldorf in the second division as well. And Asano, who plays for Bochum. So I think they're going to have some real fun when they go back to their clubs in January. <laughs> saying, yeah. how did the World Cup go, lads? So everything is because of rum. On the, uh, on the left side. <laughs> well, but it's in, I, mean, no, actually, no. I think you could make an argument to say he's been their most consistent player in all the three games. Who? The left back. Ram. Ram. Yeah. Archie, when he's saying, though, as well, we're crying out for Can number nine. Mm. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm allowed to say something about Germany because it's one of, it was one of my favourite teams getting into this. We are talking about that there's not enough quality on this team and I think they are top... Uh, in Europe, all of them, if you have a look, they are playing in all top leagues. I think that the only problem of this team has been the mentality. They come from a, a very big pressure after playing in two massive tournaments. Very, 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 to be honest, very bad. And when they arrived to this one, that pressure of trying to play, I think it was just too much. They thought that uh, just playing a little bit, if you have a look to the players that they got from, it's just fantastic. There's a lot of quality on that team, but the mentality... The, the German team has been always a team that overrun every single team that he got in from. They just, uh, the pressure, the intensity has been always very high. And you can see that the, from the first minute of this competition, they haven't been in that situation. And there are not many difficult play, many different players that they played before. And something that shocked me a lot once they finished the game, 
Yes, Muller arrived to the press conference, doesn't even leave the, the stadium and says a farewell to the national team. Says that, thank you very much for the support. I probably, this is my last game. On this, I did everything. What is the mentality of a player who is thinking about retiring from the national team right after the whistle blows when he, you are, have to face uh, the, the opponent? I think the mentality of this team is the one that has changed a lot, not the quality of the players. Luis, just while we are actually talking to you for the minute, we'd like to get a uh, talk on mentality because I wonder what all the Spanish fans are thinking and how their heart rates are when they see Unai Simón, the Spanish goalkeeper, on the ball. What do you think of him? <laughs> Well, I guess I, I guess we all have our doubts when uh, he's arrived the ball. Not because we don't uh, uh, we don't know that he's got quality and he's uh, capable of uh, playing with the ball. I think he's, he's he's got a fantastic touch. But that cold blood that he's got, that uh, tranquility that he sh tries to show, I think doesn't doesn't um, cope with the moments. I think they sometimes get the mistake of yeah, that's the way that I, I arrive here with uh, the, with the confidence of the manager, with the with the way that I play. But there are moments where I think that you need to understand that that's not enough for everybody. You are making nervous to the players you go next to him. And because you are delaying you know, or giving the pass, I think the pass to Balde today, it could have been a little bit better or it could have been longer. And you don't put Balde on the spot to a young player at 18 that has to go through, have to make a control in the air. So at the end, sometimes you need to think not only on your perspective, also on the perspective of the rest one. And for the supporters of uh, the national Spanish national team, Yes, we get a little bit nervous when he's on the ball. Uh, yeah, uh, interesting. It all worked out in the end, apart from Germany, that is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, apart from Germany. So what now, Archie? What happens next? <laughs> well, Hansi Flick has a contract as head coach of the national team until, up until and including Euro 2024, which is held in Germany. He said that he wants to stay on. I wonder if that would be the right call right now. I think that there needs to be an overhaul of the way that they are doing things at the DFB, at the German FA, because the same mistakes keep on happening. And just listening to the rhetoric of Hansi Flick after this, I, I didn't see somebody who thought he'd got a lot wrong when it's staring everybody else in the face. And I think that in Germany as well, you have a lot of people on TV who played under Flick when he was assistant coach uh, to Joachim Love in 2014. And I see a lot of loyalty towards him when you hear them speak about him. But I think that there are some indefensible decisions here. And unless that I think he's able to be a little bit more self-critical publicly, I'm not sure that he's the right guy for Germany in this tournament, in, in the next tournament. I mean, this tournament, definitely not. <laughs> but I think, that, uh, I, I think that serious questions need to be asked of him and of the DFB, of team director Oliver Bierhoff, because also I think that there were lots of things that didn't work out for them off the pitch. I don't include the One Love armband in that. I don't think that that played a role uh, as a little message to Rob Page and Eden Hazard, what they said. But I think that on the football side of things and how they're organising things there, they do have certain weaknesses in certain positions at, at fullback, for example. Uh, I don't want to put it all on, on David Round, Frank, don't worry. Uh, I'm just saying that Alfonso <laughs> Davies uh, is a one-man counter-attacking, sweeping-up machine. But I think that, that there are problems and they need to address them too sweet. Yeah, there is a, there is a, a dictature of emergency in everything we, we, we see. You don't get out of the group stages, bye-bye, get out. We see uh, coaches resigning uh, the, the one after another. Where I know the, we know the coach, we know what he has been able to achieve with Bayern Munich. We know his, comp, uh, his, his talents and what he can do. And you miss a competition, bye bye, where you have a contract until until uh, um, until uh, the next Euro. I don't know. Sometimes we have to get the time maybe to uh, to explore a little bit more and to see where it goes further because, you know, his talent is not in, in question. I think. I think he's, he, he proved uh, during his career as a coach that sure. he can be the coach of the national team. Maybe he made mistakes, but well, who doesn't? You know, uh, you know, Archie, I don't, I don't profess to know anything closer to what you know about the Bundesliga and German football. But as a coach, you lose games. Hmm. Sometimes you lose games because the players you have aren't good enough. You know, at the end yeah. of the day, at the end of the day, they're out because of what happened against Japan. And they lost against Japan 
because particularly Sula, and I'm not going to single him out, but particularly him, made mistakes, and Japan showed how defensively they can keep teams out. So sometimes you can't just always blame the coach. Sometimes you don't have the players capable enough. I'm, and that's another reason... I'm not going to single Sula. That's, but you're the national, national team coach. <laughs> well, no, no, because, no because at the end of the day, he's making so many changes, particularly sticking Kimmich back at right back, because he's looking, he's looking for an answer. You know, you're not sticking Kimmich at right back if you've got a decent right back, because oh, he's oh. better going forward. So sometimes as a coach, you're having to play people in a position where you would rather play them somewhere else but you don't have another option or another good option. But that's why I disagree, because being a national team coach is different to being coach of Bayern Munich, where you can buy in people to solve your problems. As a national team coach, you know what you have well ahead of the tournament, and you can prepare a system that's going to work within that. And preparing it and playing just what you did at Bayern Munich is not going to be enough. And, and you say he's changing things around. For me, that's indecision, that he's not sure of what his best team is. And how can that be the case three games into a tournament when he's had plenty of games against good standards of opponents to be working things out? And it's not like there have been many, many injuries for Germany. Sure, Timo Werner missed the tournament, but I've not heard his name mentioned by anybody up to this point. So I think that it's about how he fits the cogs together, and that is your job as a coach. And the whole thing with Joachim Löw as well, if you told me that Hansi Flick wasn't in the coach right now, that it was Joachim Löw, I would have believed you because of the way that this team has played. What has really changed about Germany's performances since 2018, since 2021, until now? I don't see any change, and that's why, for me, I think that now would be the right time to make that coaching change, maybe, even if I don't think it is always the answer to change the coach. Maybe there's just a realisation now that... that whilst he did some very good things, ultimately at Bayern, that he's not the second coming of Guardiola or, or Klopp or Ancelotti or whoever has been hugely successful. That, that for all the reasons Archie said, that he's had all this time to work with the players and he knew, he knew his squad coming in. He had a couple of injuries, but he hasn't known his best team. He flirted with full-backs and centre-half pairings and striker pairings and one up front and Havertz in and Havertz out. That... Actually, Hansi Flick took advantage of his timing at Bayern Munich. Right place, right time. Goes in there, it's burning down under Niko Kovac. The players hated him. The results were not great. He had lost Muller. He had lost other players. There were so many rumblings behind the scene. I'm sort of not actually no more, way more than us. And he goes in there, and he is everybody's friend, which did definitely work at that period at Bayern Munich. And yeah, they got some stuff right in terms of signings and tactical stuff and had huge success. But that worked for a period. And that mm. was just the right place for him at the right time. I think we've seen the flaws here in this guy because he's had all this time we talked about. And yet, if he was to play another game tomorrow, if they had a managed to get through and they were in the knockout last 16, I'll guarantee you that German team would have changed again. Guarantee you it would have changed again. Thomas Muller would have still started up front, <laughs> I promise you, because for some reason, I don't know. Yeah. But well, we Nicholas will, we will never know. I don't know what he would have had to have done to get yeah. a start in this tournament. Beats me. I, know. Oh, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.